So we're quite often in a situation where we have to apply more than one scale factor in the same problem. So for example here I've got, uh, say, a camera that costs £170. Maybe I've given someone a discount of 25% and a sale, uh, but I've still got to apply tax on that item of uh, 15%. So uh, the discount of 25%, that would correspond to a scale factor of 0.75, uh, and the tax at one uh, at fifteen percent would be adding on fifteen percent to the to the cost, so that would uh, correspond to a scale factor of of one point one five. So the overall cost of this item would be one hundred and seventy times zero point seven five for the discount um, times one point one five uh, for the tax. So uh, we could put that into the into the calculator: one hundred and seventy times zero point seven five times one point one five. Um, and that gives us 146, uh, 63 to the nearest to the nearest penny. Uh, there, just rounding up. Um, so um, the overall scale factor that's been applied then to get to 170 to 146.63 is 0.75 times uh, 1.15. That would be um, a 0.86. And just notice, as we did in the previous video, that you know we can't just subtract these percentages. You know, it's not an increase of 25% and a decrease of 15%. So that's not an increase of 10%. We've actually ended up with, um, uh, sorry, sorry, not a decrease of 10%, but it's ended up as a decrease of of almost 14% uh, because this 15% is 15% of a of a larger value. Um, one thing we notice from this as well is that we don't uh, doesn't matter which way we apply them. We could have applied the tax first and then the discount, and the scale factor would have been. 1.15 times 0.75 would have given us the same thing. Um, so two, two scale factors applied one after the other, we multiply them together um, and apply that as the overall scale factor. So this works just as well if we've got more than two scale factors. So maybe I've got an ice cream van and I sell 80 ice creams on the first day on a Monday. Uh, the next day it does a bit better, increase by 10%, that would be a scale factor of 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, the next day, even better, scale factor of 1.25 for a 25% increase. Thursday an increase of 30%, maybe it's getting really hot by the end of the week, scale factor of 1.3. So if I want the, to work out the number of ice creams I sell on Thursday, say, I would just have to do 80 times 1.1 times 1.25 uh, times uh, 1.3. Um, so we could put that into the calculator, or you could work it out, and we'd get, that gives us 143. Um, if you wanted to know the total number of ice creams you've sold over the whole week, we'd have to work out how many we've sold on Tuesday and Wednesday and add them all together. So um, perhaps we should have done this without a calculator. Really, 80 times 1.1 for the first day is 10% increase. That's just 88. And then if I do... Uh, now here I've got a choice. I could either do 80 times 1.1 times 20 times 1.25. But I've already worked out 80 times 1.1, so I really just need to increase this by 25%. So a quarter of this is... 22, uh, so that gives 110, and then you can see we add on the 30% of that, which is another 33, to get to 143. So the total I've sold in the whole week would then be 80 plus 88 plus 110 plus 143, which is 421. Now this is a, a particularly powerful idea when I've got the same scale factor applied uh, over and over again. So for example, a typical use of this is uh, interest rates in bank accounts. So let's say I've got a bank account and it pays me 3.6% interest uh, per annum. Per annum just means each year. Um, well, that would be a scale factor of 1.036, an increase of 3.6% each, each year. At the end of the year I've got 3.6% more than I started with. So let's say I started with £700, um, then at the end of the first year I would have uh, 700 times uh, 1.036, uh, which would give me, so I'd have 725 pounds and uh, 20 pence. Um, at the end of the second year, I'd have that amount times 1.036, which is the same as saying it would be times 1.036 times 1.036. So I just multiply by uh, 1.0. 36 again, so I'd now have £751.31 approximately. Um, and so this is the end of uh, year one, year two, 
uh, end of year three you could keep you know keep going times one point zero three six again I'd have seven hundred and seventy eight pounds and uh thirty five pence um now what you can see hopefully is that you know each time you're supplying the same scale factor so at the end of year three I'll have seven hundred times one point oh three six times one point oh three six times one point oh three six so another way of writing that down is 700 times 1.036 cubed. So when I put that into my calculator, I wanted to go straight to the end of year 3. I could have just done 700 times 1.036 uh, cubed and got to the same and got to the same uh, value, which is much much quicker. So actually, if I wanted to say, you know, what about year at the end of year 10? Well, I could rather than having to do it, you know, very laboriously, keep repeating that scale factor over and over again. I'll just say it's I've got 700 pounds times 1.036 to the power of 10. Which would give me approximately uh, 997 uh, pounds. And you know, I could do that for any anybody I wanted. If I wanted to know how many, uh, how much money I've got after 30 years, 700 times 1.036 uh, to the 30. Now I've got two thousand and twenty-two pounds and fifty-one pence. You can see how it racks up. Now, in reality, maybe the interest change would change from year to year, but lots of products like that will give you a fixed rate uh, from from year to year. Um, so, uh, very neat. And now, hopefully, you know you're starting to see why this scale factor one point zero three six is so much better than just you know working out three point six percent and adding it on, doing that again and again, because that sort of argument would just take you so long to work out a problem like this, and it's really easy with this scale factor method. I should say this is what people mean when they use the phrase compound interest. It's, it's interest that you get interest not just on the initial amount but on the future amounts of, of, of interest uh, as well. So I get 3.6% of the interest as well as 3.6% of the original amount and it keeps increasing and compound interest has this property then that you you know early on you just get small amounts but uh, compared to the original investment you know it ends up getting a uh, very very large and uh, increasing exponentially. Another example of the same idea is, is depreciation. So that's when something is decreasing in value over time. So maybe I've bought a car or something, say for five thousand pounds, and each year its value goes down uh, by uh, by ten percent. And again, this might seem like a slightly unrealistic example in that, that you know the the uh, amount might go down by a different amount each year. But when companies say buy cars, they will apply this sort of uh, thing in their accounts. They'll just uh, you know, just take a guess at how much their assets are worth. They'll just reduce it by a, a fixed amount like this. So it's not as it's it's not as um, uh, unrealistic or unuseful as it as it seems actually. You know. So, um, but anyway, let's use the scale factor idea uh, to, to to this the, for, for this then. Um, so ten percent uh, depreciation that would give us a scale factor of 0 0.9 for each year. So at the end of the first year, uh, the car would have reduced by ten percent or. Uh, 500 pounds and it would be worth 4,500 pounds yeah, and again in the same way we could say okay that uh, you know I could do year 2 I could multiply by 0 0.9 again or, but if I wanted just to go say straight to the end of year 6 I could say that's 5,000 times 0 0.9 uh, to the 6 because I'm going to apply that scale factor of 0 0.9 6 times now the car is only worth 2,657 pounds and 21 percent, 21 pence. At the end of year 15, it would be 5,000 times 0 0.9 to the 15. And that gives us uh, 1,029 pounds and 46 pence. So, there we go. Um, scale factors used uh, over and over again, repeatedly here, um, can uh, you know, help us solve these problems very quickly if we use them in the in the in the clever way that we've been talking about.